In my opinion, early springtime bass fishing is the best time of the year to go out fishing. This is the time of the year where some of the biggest bass in the lake are going to start pushing up shallow and they're extremely catchable. And in today's video, I want to give you the top three baits that you need to have when you go fishing. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. And like I just talked about, spring is in the air. This is the best time of the year to go out and go fishing. So if you need to stock up on your tackle, rods, reels, whatever it may be, you can find some of the best prices around at sportsmansoutfitters.com. I'm going to leave some links down below in the description to the baits that we're going to talk about today. So if you guys want to pick some of them up, click those links down below and you're greatly going to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Now, before we talk about the lures that I think you really need to have with you during early spring, let's define early spring. And in my opinion, early spring is kind of before the spawn. You know, bass typically spawn in water temperatures in the 60s, you know, 60, 65, upper 60s, somewhere in that range is typically when you're gonna have a lot of bass spawn. So when you have water temperatures that are in the upper 40s and all the way to like 59 degrees, that is what I consider to be the early spring time. Now there are literally hundreds of videos online all talking about the best lures to use during spring, during that early spring. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different because what I've noticed during the early spring time is the biggest thing, the biggest deciding factor on what you go with as far as a lure really comes down to water clarity. All across the country, no matter where you live, I think your water clarity kind of fluctuates the most during this early springtime. Depending on where you live, you know, you may have snow that is melting. We tend to have a lot of rainy conditions and that can really make some bodies of water extremely muddy, but not all of them are gonna be. Some of them are going to be still very clear. And depending on whether you're fishing muddy water or stained water or clear water, that is the biggest deciding factor on what I'm going to use as far as a lure goes. So today I'm not gonna give you just three lures over Overall, I'm going to give you three lures for each water clarity, and that's gonna be clean water, stained water, and muddy water. So let's start with clear water and work our way up to muddy water. The first clear water bait is probably my favorite bait of all time. Like I absolutely love when you can get on this bite, and that is a big swim bait, kind of like this one here. This is actually not considered a huge swim bait when it comes to swim baits. This is a six inch Mega Bass Mag Draft swim bait. If you guys have not gotten into swim bait fishing, I'm telling you what, if you pick this thing up, it's a very, very addictive bite. And during that early spring time, like I talked about with water temperatures in that 50 to 60 degree range, these bigger swim baits can really catch a lot of big bass. Now to me, most of the time swim baits like this tend to work best in clear water. You can definitely fish them in some lightly stained water but in clear water situations man this thing is hard to bite and I'm gonna fish this bait just like I would a spinner bait I'm gonna fish it in a lot of the same places that I would fish a spinner bait maybe along the bank along some lay downs around some rock around some docks wherever you might throw a spinner bait or a chatter bait throw this big swim bait it is just an unbelievable bite and sometimes you're gonna catch fish on this bait that won't bite any other bait Baits. Now when it comes to fishing this bait, what I have found is that you typically want a little bit of a chop on the water. You don't want to be in really, really slick conditions if you're fishing this. It tends to work the best when you have a little bit of a chop on the water or if you have some cloudy conditions. The other thing about this bait I think is a little bit of a misconception is that it won't work in ponds. And guys, I'm telling you what, if you are a pond fisherman, this is still a great bait to use in ponds. Now the next lure is probably one one that we all know, and that is a jerk bait. A jerk bait is a great cold water bait. You know, this really tends to excel to me when that water temperatures are in the, the mid 40s to kind of mid 50 degree range. But anytime I'm fishing in clear water situations, I am always gonna have a jerk bait. Now, the biggest thing that I've seen with jerk baits in that 50 degree range water is that I actually like to have a jerk bait that sinks very, very slowly. And this bait right here, this is a Berkeley Stunna jerkbait. It was actually designed to sink extremely, extremely slow. And I have seen it be the biggest difference between catching fish 
and not catching fish. And I'm actually gonna link a video at the end of this video that talks more about this Berkeley Stunna because again, that slow sinking, I've seen it be the biggest difference. Now, another big thing with jerk baits fishing at this time of year that I've seen to be important is the color of the jerk bait. Now, I tend to go with translucent baits because again, this is for clear water. And if I'm fishing clear water, I don't always like to have the basket too good of a look at it. As you can see, this bait here is translucent, meaning you can see through it. It's not an opaque lure. And having that natural translucent color really helps me to get bites again, even if I'm fishing this bait in ponds, which a jerk bait still can work really good in ponds, especially those deeper, clearer ponds. Now, another clear water bait that I am never gonna leave home without during the early spring is the turd, the Ned rig. Everybody and literally their brother, actually, and literally their mother knows how effective a Ned rig is. And guys, a Ned rig will work in ponds, it will work in lakes, it works everywhere, and it's not just a clear water bait. I've actually been fishing this bait today. The water temperature here is 41 degrees, and I caught a bass on this Ned rig, and it's actually pretty muddy water. But it seems like this bait definitely can excel in very clear water. I fish it shallow, I fish it deep, and if I go out during early spring and I'm fishing clear water and I'm like, man, I just wanna get bit, I just wanna catch something, I pick up a Ned Rig because I know that this bait is going to get some bites. Now let's transition over to stained water, and this is probably the water that I fish the most during the spring. I'm gonna consider stained water to be visibility of about two foot to three foot, somewhere in that zone. Now one of my favorite baits to fish during early spring in that stained water is a flat sided crankbait like the one that I have here. This is actually a Berkeley Fritz side. If you guys have been around the channel, you know that I absolutely love this bait. Over the last couple of years since this thing has been out, I have caught a ton of bass in the early springtime on this bait. And I'm always looking for kind of that stained water. Again, two to three foot. And something that is interesting is that I was actually scrolling through the deep dive app. If you guys don't know what the deep dive app I will link it down below, but this app is actually developed by Johnny Schultz at Fish the Moment, and it's actually backed by a ton, I mean a ton of different data from different tournaments. And I was scrolling through my local lake, I selected 53 degree water temperatures, stained water, which is two to four foot on the app, and bam, it, it, it nailed it. it. It selected a flat sided crankbait. So again, guys, I'm gonna leave that deep dive app down below if you wanna check that out. Now when it comes to this bait, I really like to fish it around rock. You know it might be a riprap bank, something you can visibly see, or it might be a point that extends out into the water. Maybe it's only four or five foot on top, but it's kind of a staging point before those fish go up and spawn. Bam, I'm gonna use this little flat side crankbait. I really like it around rock. Now the next bait, and I use this one a ton during this early springtime, is a tube. And guys, it seems like a lot of guys don't fish tubes as much anymore, and a tube is still an extremely effective bait. Now, anytime I am kind of flipping and pitching the shoreline in that stained water, this is the bait that I'm going to pick up. It gets a ton of bites and it catches big fish. Now, another time that I really like to fish this tube is actually on creek channel swing banks. You know, sometimes as bass move up in the springtime, they're gonna follow these creek channel swings as they go in to spawn. And one thing that I love to do is cast a tube up there in the shallow water and drag it into deeper water and sometimes you're gonna find days where the bass are still really shallow and some days they might be eight, 10 foot down on that creek channel swing bank. But a tube in stained water is a great early spring bait. Now you really can't talk about early spring baits without talking about this next lure that I'm about to show you and that is a chatterbait. The chatterbait is honestly probably the number one lure that I have tied up on the front deck of my boat most of the time. No matter if it's spring, summer, winter, fall, no matter what, I almost always have a chatterbait. But during the springtime, again, we're talking about early spring in stained water, this guy is so hard to beat. Now, there are a lot of places 
that I'm gonna throw this, but two of my favorite is simply around docks. You know, as bass move up in that colder water, a lot of times they will suspend right below floats that are on docks. And a chatterbait is a deadly way to catch those fish, especially if you have a little bit of wind. But again, we're talking about stained water here, two, three foot of visibility, and that chatterbait will catch them even in still conditions at time during the early spring. Now, the other place that I love to throw this is just around their spawning habitat. A lot of times as these bass move in the creek arms and on flats, they're going to spawn around lay down logs and they're going to spawn around grass clumps and things like that. And I'm just going to take this bait and I'm going to cover a ton of water, casting it all over the place and catching a lot of fish. Now this chatterbait here is actually the big bladed chatterbait. And along with the jerk bait that I talked about earlier, I'm going to link this video at the very end of this video if you want to learn more about the big bladed chatterbait. So now we have done the clear water baits and the stained water baits let's move into those muddy water baits and a lot of times muddy water I'm going to define as anything less than two foot of visibility right here today we have water visibility that's one foot you know if I stick my rod in the water or lure down I can see it down about one foot now one of the biggest things to remember when fishing muddy water is you want lures that displace a lot of water or have a lot of vibration because that's going to help those bass to track them down now the first lure and one that I pick up so often in the springtime is just a spinner bait. A good old spinner bait. This is like, to me, it's like one of the most original lures out there. But man, in muddy water situations, it can catch some of the biggest bass around. Now, I'm gonna be fishing a spinner bait around visible cover. You know, anything that I can visibly see with my eyes. Because when you fish in muddy water, a lot of times those fish are gonna be pretty shallow and they're gonna be tight to cover. So, a lot of times, I'm gonna fish it around a stump. I'm gonna fish it around a lay down. I'm gonna actually try to hit this on dock posts. If I'm fishing a riprap bank, I'm gonna fish it pretty shallow on that riprap and make sure that I'm paralleling that riprap. But the big thing here is fish it around visible cover. And I try to hit this bait right up against that cover because a, a spinner bait is extremely weedless. You can bring it through wood extremely well and you can catch a lot of big bass in early spring on a spinner bait. Now the second lure for muddy water, which again, it's always tied up on my front deck of the boat. And this lure excels in not just muddy water, but I do really like to fish it a lot in the mud and that is the jig, right? A good old jig. I feel like when you get in muddy water during early spring, the most traditional lures out there tend to do really, really well. And a jig, like the spinnerbait, is like a traditional lure. It's like one of the ones that we all own. Some guys like to throw jigs, some guys don't like to throw jigs, but a lot of times, this is what I'm gonna use to pitch into heavy cover, whether that's a lay down log, even grass clumps, or skip up underneath of a dock. The thing that I like about a jig is that again water displacement a, a bigger jig coming through that water although it may not have rattles like this one doesn't have rattle rattles it displaces a lot of water and those bass are going to feel that water displacement through their lateral line so i tend to flip and pitch a jig a lot in muddy water. I tend to almost always have some sort of crawl just to add a little bit more vibration in that mud to really help those bass hone in on that bait. Now the third lure that I fish a lot in muddy water, a square bill. I really like a square bill in the muddy water, again, because of water displacement and vibration. And cranking a square bill, it's one of the funnest ways to catch bass in the early spring. Now, like I talked about, I did a video on the Berkeley Stunna and the the big blade chatterbait. I'm gonna link those videos right here. So if you guys wanna watch videos on these lures that we talked about, click on them right here. Also, don't forget to check out sportsmansoutfitters.com. Subscribe to the channel, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.